I've been using the new MacBook Pro for the past couple of days, and I'm really impressed. Really impressed. Everything about this new MacBook is a huge upgrade, from the screen, to the bottom, to the top, to outside, inside. Everything just seems a little bit better, and I kind of want to talk about that today. And if you're not new to this channel, then I, you know I like to start with the hardware first. The MacBook Pro has four USB Type-C ports. It has two on the left side, and then it also has two USB Type-C ports on the right side, right beside a headphone jack slash microphone jack. I will say the ports was a little bit of a hurdle for me, especially since I have to use external hard drives and SD cards. So dongle gate, hit me in a way that I was not prepared for. But looking on the bright side, I love the fact that you can plug the charger in any one of these USB type C ports and it work just as well. I love the versatility in that. All right, so now that we've looked at the sides, let's actually open up this bad boy so that you can notice the gigantic trackpad. This thing is huge. And just to give you a comparison, I'm gonna give you a shot of the previous trackpad in my 2012 MacBook Pro. Also, if you guys would like to see a comparison of the 2012 MacBook Pro with the new MacBook Pro in this video, be sure to put in the comments down below and let me know. Moving up from the trackpad to the keypad, they have actually redone the keypad again since there were so many complaints about it. There's no longer a butterfly mechanism. They actually said on their website that it was a scissor mechanism. And while we're talking about the keypad, we might as well talk about the touch bar up front. They actually took the escape key and the touch ID key off of the trackpad touch bar entirely. It's one of the biggest reasons is the fact that when you're doing programming, and that's something that a lot of people do on the Mac for the creative side, you have to have that escape key when you're programming because it prompts you to hit those buttons. All right, so we might as well continue from bottom to top, moving away from the trackpad all the way up to the display. Now, this MacBook is a 16-inch MacBook instead of a 15-inch MacBook, but it's not really that much bigger because they increased the screen size with and decreased the bezels so that they wouldn't have to make it bulkier or bigger. And you'll be able to notice that in the pictures here versus the pictures here. All right, so let's move on to the speakers because this is actually something that is very hard to test out the quality for you all. But I do wanna note that they are placed beside the keyboard. And just from personal experience and talking about this and listening to the keyboard during editing and watching YouTube videos, it is some of the best speakers that I have ever heard in any computer. It out be any smartphone I've ever heard. Um, the only thing that I can compare it to is the sound bar on my TV, and that's a, that's a that's a big compliment to give for speakers on a computer. I would also like to note the fact that the 16-inch MacBooks are replacing the 15-inch MacBooks. They're not adding it to the line, and I think that this has something to do with the fact that they've been trying to clean up the names of the computers and the actual line that they have because they've made a mess over the past several years. So cleaning everything up kind of makes sense. They didn't change or raise the price. The entry level for the 16 inch MacBook Pro is now $23.99 and it goes all the way up to whatever you need it to be. <laughs> Although this is very difficult for me to show because I'm not gonna take my MacBook apart. If I can find a picture, I'll insert that here. But the MacBook Pro 16 inch has the biggest battery that you can possibly get onto a plane with. So but since we've talked about price, um, I do want to mention that this thing, can you can upgrade this all the way from a half a terabyte all the way up to 8 terabytes of storage and 36 gigabytes of RAM. Now, I've been editing with this computer for the past several days. 16 gigabytes of RAM is allowing me to color grade. It's allowing me fast scrubbing through 4K video. The works it is doing it with ease and it's not having a single ounce of problems. So that really excites me. And I don't really think that you need 32 gigabytes of storage unless you're doing something like MKBHD and you're editing with like three, 400 gigabytes of 8K footage, which is goals. <laughs> but anyways, it has been a smooth and easy transition going from my old 2012 MacBook to the new 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. 
Uh, everything is about it is better in every single way. And if you have any questions about it in the comments, um, I will easily watch those when this video comes out and respond to you as fast as I possibly can. While you're at it, be sure to check out my social media links like this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. As always, I hope you guys have a great evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.